Welcome back to BVE 2015. I'm joined here with Emma Riley from Doc10. Emma, I know you from production, but you don't work in production anymore. Tell me what you're doing now. I don't, no. Um, I'm head of business development for Doc10, who are the studio post and connectivity provider in Media City UK in Salford. So just a small gig then? Yeah, just, yeah. A, just a, it's just a little building up, up north somewhere, yeah. So, so this is your first BV show as Doc10. Yep. For anyone who's not familiar with Doc10, what do you do and why are you here? Well, um, so Doc10 is a, uh, first of all, we run the studios in, uh, in Salford in Media City UK, so uh, for clients like the BBC and for ITV. In addition, we have a, a very uh, expanding post-production department um, up there that also services, again, BBC and ITV, but also um, a raft of local indies as well, um, including um, quite a very busy drama department um, with Red Production Company. Um, and then also we do, um, we look after the connectivity across the campus um, and, and wider for all Media City clients. So there's just over 100 tenants within Media City UK. Uh, we provide and manage the, um, the fiber network across Media City and also um, are the caretaker of the networks who access into those clients. So this is all about removing kind of traditional storage solutions and, and putting everything into the cloud, am I right? Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's the reason we're here, actually, as our first BVE, our first time here, is we want to, de we want to be able to give our clients access to um, the incredible infrastructure that we have at Media City, but not have to be based over a fiber connectivity over campus. Um, the Media City is created as a, a really great ecosystem to be able to trial out new, um, new software, new, um, new applications, but really the reason we're here is we've, we've mastered being able to extend those off campus over normal IP. So is this something that's going to be available to people outside of that infrastructure? I mean, presumably if you're here at the show, you're looking at new business opportunities. So if, if we're based in London, can we, is Doc10 still relevant to us? Absolutely, so part of the architecture is to service two client bases. One of those are clients who are existing clients who currently use our studio facilities and or our post-production. Um, but another client base is looking to those who want a, uh, a cloud-based solution. They want to be able to access applications, be it ingest and editing um, through the cloud. And what we offer to the market, which is unusual to others, is a private cloud-based in Media City. So we're not based on um, Amazon S3, we're not based on traditional clouds. We've actually created our own private cloud based in our secure facility. We, we had Larry Jordan on a second ago, and he's been talking about you know, working with, in higher resolutions and how storage and moving those files around is, is really important. That's something clearly you must be looking at because as we move towards 4K and beyond, that kind of you know, quadruples some of our storage requirements. I mean, how are you, how are you looking at that as a kind of technology? Well, it, it's a really interesting question and, and one, of, uh, one thing that we've been posed really is, is the, what we felt there was a lack of innovation around was about the shoot to edit process, um, especially with media getting bigger and bigger. So um, at BVE, we're demoing or giving previews of our own proprietary software called FieldDoc, which is a remote ingest application. It allows um, media wrangling on location, which is uh, quite common, but also allows a connectivity test, so you can see wherever you are in the country or the world, what your connectivity is, and then advising you whether you um, want to ingest, um, send back the native back to our private cloud to be uh, used in our post or downloaded elsewhere, or actually you don't have the connectivity to send such high formats, um, high volume formats, and actually you would like to transcode. And we have offer um, four different types of proxy, and it will transcode locally and send an editable proxy back instead. So really trying to speed up your time to get into the edit, taking couriers and, and the like out of the equation, hard drive, single point of failure, those kind of things, and really harnessing the power of the internet to get you to your edit faster. And crucially, because it's a proxy-based workflow and there are a choice of proxies, you can choose if you don't have the connectivity to actually choose a lower resolution so you can still speed up your production and conform later and do a, an on, offline, online workflow. And, and are you just looking at the broadcast industry? Is, who, I mean, who are your clients? Uh, is, is, a, is a small corporate video production company based in Reading mm -hmm. 
potentially going to be looking to use your services? Or who's your customer base? Um, absolutely. So we start with the, the customers that we know and love. So we do start with our broadcast clients. Um, so we're starting with uh, observational documentary makers, factual documentary makers. But we've also already got a corporate client based in Manchester who their, their principles are still the same. They still shoot, if anything, they're the ones embracing 4K quicker than some of our broadcast clients are. So they're the ones that are feeling a bit more of the pain of that high storage, lots of drives, media management, how do they get to the edit quicker, um, under pressure from their clients to deliver just as much as broadcast clients can be for transmission. Um, so really, our, we've designed the product to be quite mass market in that way. Really, it's a file transfer for broadcast, but also for corporate, for commercials, for short form. And interestingly, one of the great applications is in sport, um, where more short form, um, uh, and topical uh, content needs to be in the edit as fast as possible. So, so how does it work in practical terms? Just take me through a kind of a three minute summary if you like. So there's a crew working on location, mm -hmm. they're shooting a sports game or some corporate film. Mm -hmm. Can they upload from location or is this something mean, they come back to their office, mm -hmm. They, they log into the cloud, and is that how it happens? Talk, talk me through the actual physical process. There's a few options, so uh, let's take your example. So they're filming on location. Um, currently, they will be filming, I, I expect, on, um, on cameras that shoot on either SD cards or compact flash cards or S by S cards. So normally there would be a media wrangling process involved, or DIT involved, who would be backing those cards up to portable hard drives. Um, what we propose is we, we still want to be able to help that system, so one thing our software will do, our fields up will do, was help do that, that media wrangling over to portable hard drives. It will allow you to create folder structures, it will do a checksum to make sure that what you've copied from the card goes onto the drive. But the next process is the really interesting one. So the software then checks what connectivity you have. So you may be in the hotel at night, you may be in the Holiday Inn, and you may have a certain amount of connectivity based on the, the internet that the Holiday Inn provides you. You may also, um, or alternatively, you may have a 4G dongle, you may have a different connectivity options, or you might be back at a unit base where you've got good connectivity. So the software will check your connectivity, your upload speed, and based on the different selections, will tell you how long it will take for you to send your media back. Now, your media initially is coming back to Doc10's private cloud, so it's checking how long it will take you. You're then informed how which workflow to choose, it's up to you. Do you want to wait for the couple of hours it will take to send your native back, or do you actually want to do this process quicker, transcode locally, and send the editable proxy back instead? So either way, your media then uh, goes securely through a VPN connection back to our private cloud. You then have a number of choices. Should you wish, you can of course come into our post-production department in Salford, uh, which we'd be more than happy to see you. However, we appreciate not everybody wants to do their post-production in Salford. So instead, you can use our remote editing platforms to start reviewing, start sync pulling, start putting your story together, and then export that metadata, but also download that media through our click and collect browser portal. The browser portal can be downloaded over normal internet, so your post house or your in-house facility can download the proxies or the native media that you sent back um, with no proprietary hardware needed. But the interesting thing is the portal can also be configured to download over specific networks. So we download to post houses over Soho Net. So we can speed up every part of the process to get you from shoot, media wrangling shoot to edit. As and as presumably possible. you're adding a layer of security for insurance purposes because you're storing the files in the cloud which have mm -hmm. got obviously latency and redundancy built in. Absolutely. Uh, it sounds like a fascinating system. Where can people find out more about Dot10 here at the show? Well, at the show, we're over in the VIP and speakers lounge. Um, we went there because they've got good cake. Um, we've got a little roped off area at the back. Um, more than ever was more than welcome to come and see us. We're demoing uh, Field Doc, the software, but also remote edit capabilities as well. What you can do once you're in the cloud based on Avid's everywhere uh, applications. And we'd be more than happy for people to drop by and, and come see us. Presumably, just to finish up, presumably there's massive cost savings to an infrastructure cost. If you're working with Doc10, You've made the infrastructure investment, so you, you, your, your client is basically just logging into a portal, is that right? Absolutely, you know, we, Media City was built around exactly this kind of application. It was meant to harness the power of network connectivity, of fiber connectivity in the internet, and be able to, to allow the clients to, to access into it. All we're really doing is opening the portal up 
Securely, of course. Fantastic. Clients, Sounds really are. fascinating. Listen, Emma, I know you've got to be somewhere. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Um, thanks very much, folks. We'll be back very shortly.